Hello and welcome to the broom closet. This is Seka. Thank you for joining me here again. I am attempting another watercolor tutorial. This time it is from the YouTuber Mako Chino. Her channel has so many good videos, but I have been in such a fall spirit and I cannot wait for September, October, and November to get here that I really wanted to do an autumnal themed watercolor tutorial. So I'm following hers and she does three different fall scenes. So I'm going to attempt to do those. Now in this first scene, she depicts a very foggy, almost birch tree-like forest and I'm attempting to layer on wet on wet technique, making the trees look like they're lost in some kind of mist. And compared to hers, I went very dark very quickly and I want to attempt to do this again because it was just very dreamy and the next time I do it I'm going to definitely go much lighter with this first layer. I'm really loving using the Payne's Gray. It has kind of a green undertone, so I use a lot of that in this first painting. It's only the end of August, but here in South Carolina, it has been quite the summer. Very hot, very humid, very traditional. And I put Halloween Town 1 and 2 on the other day. And ever since, I have just been feeling like sweater weather needs to get here as soon as possible. Part of me wants to just crank up the AC and put on my comfy sweatpants, my woolly socks, and just freeze out my husband, but I can't do that. So I'm going to enjoy some autumnal visuals with you. So right now I'm working on putting some of the little branches in the tree. I am not great at branches. I don't have the patience for them. And also in her paint, it seems as if having that lighter background really makes these yellow and orange leaves pop a lot more. Please go watch her video uh, when she does the next painting. If you look at this first one, you can see very gentle round shapes that her brush makes. And when mine dried, it had a bit of that, but it was very muddy because my background had been so dark. And in this second one, we're also doing a wet on wet technique. If you've seen the other two tutorial vi videos that I followed, this is pretty standard, um, especially when you're doing skies or landscapes, you're going to make them pretty soft. I really liked this one because I had only done a few foggy landscapes prior to this, and I was excited to try another one.
So as I'm dabbing in the color, you can see on the left side that they're starting to pool up a little bit. She does clarify in her video to make sure that your water is, is not pooling anywhere on the page. I didn't even have a paper towel or tissue to mop it up, so I just tilted the page a little bit and it kind of evened itself out. Loki came to help me. I enjoyed this one a lot because she stressed that if your paint colors look muddy, that's totally fine. That's all in the essence of fall. We have those warm colors that seem to put you in like a sepia tone, dreamlike state. So that helped a lot with this one because as you'll see, this tree line will gradiate into um, like a little pasture or meadow. And in her video, her meadow has almost a brighter feel to it. Mine is very muted, which is totally fine. That's what happens. But um, where her tree line meets the meadow, I noticed her colors are a bit more vivid. I tried to keep a little area of light patches to kind of resemble where the sun would be. Um, and later on, we go in and add a little more color. And you'll see on the left side, I tried to keep that left portion of the meadow white or a lighter green. Again, I'm pretty sure this is Payne's gray. It's so pretty and it just has a very, very warm undertone to it. In Mako's tutorial, she does add another little tree in the foreground to kind of give the eye a little more to bounce off of. I chose not to do that. I was already um, just killing time trying to wait for the watercolor to dry. But you can always use a hair dryer. As you can see, my washi tape was getting bored and started to lift. So this last painting, we're also doing a wet on wet. And she has this start to add in some clouds here in the top portion. And at the bottom, I went much lighter because this is going to be a water area. These are just very, very loose clouds. And then immediately, I was trying to do this in real time, so I added in more Payne's Gray to uh, simulate some trees and these trees are going to be mirrored 
in the end to make it look like a reflection on the water. This is very standard Bob Ross style. So I was trying to meld him and this YouTuber's ideas together as far as uh, reflections on water. Adding these super bright oranges was very scary to me. I don't typically work in that spectrum, but this was fun. And what you'll see me doing here is taking this super flat ridge of the brush and using it to pick up color off of the page so it looks more like the reflection on the water. And I'm doing this here and there to simulate some ripples in her video, she instructs us to use a bit of brown, a darker color where the trees meet, just to indicate that there's shadow under there. I added a little, but I ended up picking most of it back up anyway. There are our three autumnal watercolors. I loved this tutorial. I cannot wait to try more of hers. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you go watch her video. It gave me a bit more courage to try and add bright bold colors on top of muted backgrounds and it definitely inspired me to do more foggy scenes moody scenes everyone thank you again i hope you have a wonderful day and enjoy this washi tape removal <laughs>